Jesus Christ's Sermon on the Mount was one of the most well-known sermons in all of Christianity. His powerful teachings were filled with rich images that changed the lives of many and became a sure foundation for them to withstand the world's toughest winds and floods. Let's take a more detailed look at the sermon in Matthew chapters 6 through 7. Jesus told us to take heed that ye do not your alms, which are money or goods charitably or mercifully given to those in need, before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. He said that when we do our alms, we should not sound a trumpet before us or loudly boast of them, like the hypocrites in the synagogue and streets, who then have the reward of the glory of men. Instead, we should do our alms in secret, not letting thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, and our Father in heaven would reward us openly. Jesus said we should not pray like hypocrites, who love to have their reward of being seen of men while praying, standing in the synagogues and street corners. He said that we should enter our closets, shut the door, and pray in secret to our Father in heaven, who will then reward us openly. We should not use vain repetitions in our prayers, which means to repeat the same things over and over again or pray without sincere, heartfelt feeling. He said to not be like the heathen who think they will be heard for their much speaking and that our Father in heaven knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Savior said that when we forgive others their trespasses, which means to go beyond the boundaries God has set, or to commit sin, our Heavenly Father will also forgive us. But if we do not forgive them, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Jesus said not to fast like hypocrites who disfigure their faces with a sad countenance, which means one's face or expression. They have their reward of being seen by and appearing unto men to fast. When we fast, we should anoint our head and wash our face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and he shall reward thee openly. Jesus told us not to lay up treasures for ourselves on earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and thieves break through and steal. He said we should lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven, where they will be safe from earthly influences. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The Savior said that the light of the body is the eye, and if our eye is single, meaning healthy, sincere, or without guile, our whole body will be full of light. But if our eye is evil, our whole body will be full of great darkness. Jesus taught that no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else hold to the one and despise the other. He said that we cannot serve God and mammon, which means money, material wealth, or the greedy pursuit of gain. Jesus said that we should take no thought for our lives, what to eat or drink, or to put on our body. He asked if our life was more than meat, or our body more than raiment or clothing. He said to behold the fowls of the air, who did not sow, which means to cultivate or plant seeds, nor do they reap or gather into barns, meaning to harvest a crop. Jesus said that our Heavenly Father feeds them, and asked if we are not much better than they. The Savior asked which one of us could add one cubit, the distance between our elbow and fingertips, or about 18 inches, to our stature or height. He asked why we thought of our raiment or clothing and said, Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Not even King Solomon in all his glory was clothed like them. Jesus asked that if God clothed the grass of the field that lived today and was cast into the oven tomorrow, then shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith. He said we should take no thought and ask what shall we eat, drink, or be clothed with. The Gentiles seek after all these things, and our Heavenly Father knows what we need. He told us to seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He said we should take no thought for the morrow, 
For it shall take thought for the things of itself, and sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Jesus said to judge not, that ye be not judged, and that we would be judged by how we judged others. He said the Lord would recompense, which is a required response after a theft or injury, to every man, according to the measure he had measured to others. He said we should not judge our brother, and only behold or see in his eye the mote, which is a Greek word meaning speck or a small dry particle like straw, chaff, for a wood splinter that might enter the eye. We must also consider in our own eye the wooden beam that was used to construct houses, and we are hypocrites if we don't first cast it out of our own eyes so we can then see clearly to cast the mote out of our brother's eye. The Savior warned us to not waste valuable things on those who would not appreciate them or be angered by the offer. He said we should not give that which is holy unto the dogs or cast our pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend or tear you. Jesus said, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Everyone who asked would receive. He that was seeking would find, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Jesus asked, What man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will give him a stone? Or give him a serpent if he ask for a fish? If we, being evil, knew how to give our children good gifts, then how much more would a perfect Heavenly Father give us good things if we asked him in faith? The golden rule teaches that all things we would have others do to us, we should also do to them. For this is the Law and the Prophets. This is another name for the Old Testament, which is also called the Hebrew Scriptures. Jesus commanded us to enter ye in at the straight gate, which means narrow, close, or not broad. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in. He said that straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, that leads into life, and only a few will find it. Jesus warned about false prophets who disguise themselves in sheep's clothing, but are inwardly ravenous wolves. He said we would know them by their fruits, and asked if men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles. Grapes and figs were common fruit in the Holy Land, and people knew that the small berries on thorn bushes were not grapes on grapevines, and the flowers on thistles were not the petals that produce figs. Good trees bring forth good fruit, while corrupt trees bring forth evil fruit. And every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Jesus then warned us, By their fruits ye shall know them. Jesus said that not everyone who told him, Lord, Lord, would enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. While many would say, Have we not prophesied, cast out devils, and done many wonderful works in thy name? He would profess or declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Jesus said that everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, is like a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And those who heard them but did not do them were like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And when the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, great was its fall. When Jesus ended his sermon, the people were astonished, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. He taught that while following his teachings won't always keep adversity from our lives, when we build our lives upon the solid rock foundation of his gospel, we will be able to withstand the world's floods and storms. And this is Matthew chapters 6 and 7 in the New Testament. Look for hidden images located in the video. You can support PonderFund by visiting our Etsy site, PonderFund.com website, and our Facebook page to find more fun things to do. Please like and share these videos with anyone you think might enjoy them. Also, please subscribe to this PonderFund YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching and find some time this week to ponder.